now, Ruthie, which one do you think I should send? Well, they're both cute. Thank you. But do I look more like a laundry commercial on this one or this one? Well, I don't know. It, is it a bleach or a detergent commercial? <laughs> You mean the trunk? Yeah. It's a trunk. Oh. Are you Miss Anne Marie? Yes, I am. Oh, this belongs to you. Well, I don't know anything about a trunk. Where's it from? The Duke Hotel. The Duke Hotel? Yeah. Aren't they tearing down the Duke Hotel? Yeah, they found us in the basement. It's been down there for years. Yeah, but who sent it? I don't know. I just looked to see who gets it. Harry Marie? Harry Marie? <gasps> it's my Uncle Harry's trunk. Can I tell you what a fantastic piece of news that is? <laughs> now, where do you want it? Well, you can just, just put it over there. Oh, look at all those stickers. You want to give me 480, lady? For what? For delivering it. But why should I pay for it? Because I only have my lunch money. <laughs> no, no, I mean, isn't the person who sent it supposed to pay for it? The person who sent it is the hotel. They said if you don't want it, I should throw it out. No, no, you can't do that. This is Uncle Harry's trunk. That's how I felt. <laughs> I'll get your money. Hey, you know, I'm thinking it might be a better idea if you put it in the basement. Would you mind? What I mind. Does it matter if I mind? <laughs> what I mind it mattered. Would I be doing this at all? No. I'd be in Tahiti. And I wouldn't be talking to that girl. <laughs> about this trunk for years. Uncle Harry was the only show business blood in our family. <gasps> until me. Well, wasn't there a key to it somewhere in your family? I'm lucky they found the trunk. <sighs> oh, it's no use. We might as well wait for Donald. You know, there may be something valuable in there. Ruthie, are you kidding? Of course there is. Uncle Harry played every vaudeville house in America. Let's call a locksmith. Now nah, we might as well wait for Donald. He'll be over in a couple of hours. A couple of hours? How can you stand the suspense of waiting two whole hours for Donald to come and open it? I can't. That's why I'm going to take those pictures over to my agent's office, just to remind myself. But to remind yourself of what? That if I can wait for my agent to do something about my career, I can wait for anything. You mean Harry Marie really did leave you a trunk? Uh-huh. It must be the one he mentioned in his will, but they never could find it. Now, that's something I can probably get you some publicity on. Really? Do you think anybody would be interested in reading about Uncle Harry? He wasn't exactly a star. No, Anne, but it's the kind of story that sentimental editors enjoy printing. Leave it to me. I'll think of some angle that will get people interested in you. In me? It's Uncle Harry's trunk. If Uncle Harry's dead, Anne, the publicity won't help him. Then what's it gonna do for my career? It died three years ago. <laughs> Go on. I'm too nervous. <laughs> Why? Well, Donald, suppose there's something really valuable in there. Oh, honey, chances are there's nothing but a bunch of old clothes and things in there. That's what I mean, Uncle Harry's old clothes. Smelling of 25 years of show business, reeking with the odors of a hundred different theaters, saturated with the air of dancers and junkers and animal acts. <laughs> Maybe we'd better open it outside, by an ocean. <laughs> oh, Donald. OK, come, come on, now open it up. Oh, that. Donald, look at this stuff. The music. Have you ever seen such a wild collection of things? Oh, Donald, look at this. <laughs> Don't you just can't find stuff like this anymore. Who would want to look? <laughs> oh, look at this. Is that 
saw my agent. Yesterday he said he'd try, and today it's in the paper. Mm -hmm. Read it out loud. Um, old-time vaudeville performer Harry Marie wills trunk full of showbiz memorabilia to grandniece Anne Marie. Starving, young, unknown actress struggles to carry on the Marie name in the true tradition of the theater. <laughs> Isn't that terrific? It's the fame you've always wanted. You're established as a starving unknown. <laughs> Get your coffee. Let's go downstairs and go through the rest of the stuff. I love it. Oh, look at these! Oh, look, are they great? Look at this. What is that? Oh, that's fantastic. It's like a patchwork. Oh, Donald, this stuff is great. Oh, Donald, look at these. Are you Anne Marie? Yes, I am. How do you do? I'm Milton Berle. Uh, uh, yes, I, I know. <laughs> you, you didn't have to say that. No. For goodness sakes, Milton Berle. Right. Donald, look who's here. Hello, hello, Mr. Burl. Hello, Donald. You know each other? I uh, know. Well, he just called you Donald. Well, he heard you call me Donald. <laughs> Isn't that nice how he remembered? The total recall. Oh, Mr. Burl, I just can't believe it. Milton Burl. Ever since I was a little girl, I I've worshipped you. That's great. Well, my father idolized you. That's great. Even my grandmother. That's it. <laughs> My grandmother was very young for her age. Uh, height. May I? Oh, of oh. course. Come in. Oh, this must be the trunk I read about, the one that old Harry Marie willed to you. Yes, that's it. Did, did you know my Uncle Harry? Did I know him? Are you kidding? We were friars. Actually, he was a friar and I was a broiler. <laughs> Milton Broil. Oh. <laughs> Milton Broil. There'll be a lot more laughing around here, if you don't mind. <laughs> you see that you have it open, huh? Yes. Well, it didn't come with a key, but Donald managed to open the lock. Donald? Oh, you're Donald. Yes. <laughs> Donald Hollinger, my fiancé. Oh, you're the one that's taking her away from all of this, huh? Yes, that's right, sir. <laughs> you see, you, uh, when you opened it, you didn't take anything out or destroy anything, did you? Oh, no, I took a lot of things out, but I've got everything. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Sight unseen, I'll give you $100 for it. A hundred dollars? Well, don't, don't quibble. I'll, I'll make it two hundred dollars. There you are. Take it or leave it. Well, uh, well, uh, it isn't that. I just don't understand. Well, what's to understand? I'm giving you two hundred dollars for a beat-up, old, broken-down trunk. Now, what do you say? Don't take it. <laughs> Danny Thomas. You're Danny Thomas. Yes, I know. What are you doing here, Thomas? What am I doing here? What, what are you, you doing? doing? You're oh, not... my gosh, Mr. Thomas. I've been a fan of yours for years. Are you the one? <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. I'm telling him because he has no way of knowing. <laughs> did he offer to buy your uncle's trunk? Yes, he did, but sure, I... Sure, I offered her $300 for Is it. Is everything intact? You didn't give anything away, did you? Oh, no, it's all okay, there, Okay, I'll but... offer you $400 Four. for it. Listen, Danny, before you offer four, I looked in the trunk. There's no nose job in it. <laughs> $450. Four fifty. Don't be shocked, kid. Burl loves auctions. It's the only chance he gets to say something someone else hasn't said yet. <laughs> Five hundred. Four hundred. I said that before. That's where I heard it. See what I mean? Five fifty. Oh, didn't you just bid five? I did. You see, he, he can't see his mouth with his nose in the way. <laughs> five fifty. Six. <laughs> Six fifty. <laughs> Well, six fifty. Well, gee, I, I really don't even think I want to sell the trunk. What I do you mean, mean you don't want to sell so the trunk? Many, I know, read the article. Wait, 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 let's not. Now get listen, it. Thomas, let's don't you not, get into this? Hold it, hold you it. just walked in the door. You let's have nothing. Let's not get excited. Now you look like a level-headed young man. Who are you? He's my fiance. Let the young man speak for himself. <laughs> He's my fiance. <laughs> Funny. Thank you. What are you thanking him for? What he knows about comedy. Could fill a book. Yeah, a cookbook. <laughs> now, look, I'm sure you'll want to talk to your little girlfriend here and convince her that she ought to sell that old trunk. Uh, look, look, wait a minute. I, I, I really don't know how to say this, Mr. Burl and Mr. Thomas. Oh, you say it, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Burl. <laughs> I mean, I'm so impressed that you're both here and that you even knew my Uncle Harry and, and that you want to buy his, his trunk, but, gee, I... I just don't think it'd be right for me to sell it. I mean, my Uncle Harry went, went to a lot of trouble to save all this stuff just for me and... Look, look. Harry Marie's dancing shoes. No. 
They're sensational. It's a collector's item. Tell you what I'll do. Forget about the trunk. I'll give you 600 for the shoes. No, no, I, I, I don't want to sell the shoes. I, 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 I don't want to sell the shoes. Hey, look, look, what, look what's in there. Look, Danny, all the great stuff. stuff. Donald, the shoes. I'll bet you there is something in those shoes. <laughs> Money or something. All well, the sticks that he got lamps with. Look at this. Fantastic stuff there. I, look at this dirty old coat. I never saw such a... That's my... <laughs> Not the heels. The heels of the shoes. Maybe they come apart. Maybe they're trick heels. Maybe something's inside the shoes. That's trick right. heels. That's right. Hey, I'd always got a scream when he yeah. used that. Tell you what. Forget about the shoes. Just sell me the trunk. The, the, the trunk? Yeah. Well, uh, gee, I, I, I really don't think so. I mean, well, look at all those stickers. I mean, they trace my Uncle Harry's entire stickers? life. Stickers? You want the stickers? Keep the stickers. Keep the trunk. I'll buy the lock. The lock? Well, forget the lock. I'll buy this. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, I've got a feeling that there's something in this trunk that's worth a lot of money. I thought you were only interested in the sentiment. I am interested in the sentiment. Well, I just feel that if there is a lot of money to be made here, Uncle Harry would have liked me to make it. You sure of that? No, but I want me to make it. <laughs> Oh, Daddy, hi! Hello, Anne. Oh, you're here, Hollinger. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Marie. Oh, Daddy, you didn't have to go shopping for me. I've got lots of food. I didn't. Somebody at the restaurant read this article and prepared these care packages for you. Oh, Daddy. I suppose this business about Anne starving was your idea? What are you trying to do, Hollinger? Show me up in front of my friends? No, 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 Mr. Marie. What kind of a father would I be if I let my daughter starve? Oh, Daddy, I'm not starving, for heaven's sakes. That's just a publicity stunt. And besides, Donald didn't write it. My agent did. No. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I just didn't like it, so naturally I assumed. Well, naturally. <laughs> I just want you to guess who was here this afternoon. A recruiting officer from the War on Poverty. No, Milton Burl and Danny Thomas. Milton Burl and, and Danny Thomas were here? Yeah, they wanted to buy Uncle Harry's trunk from me. They offered her $650 for it. How do you like that? Harry never owned anything worth $600 in his entire life. Well, that's what Donald and I thought. So we've been taking apart all the shoes and everything. Hey, 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 honey, wait a something... minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe there's a piece of comedy material in that trunk that Burl and Thomas won. Old comedy material. That's it. That's got to be it. 30-year-old <laughs> jokes. Hey, wait a minute, Hology. You may be right. Burl might want them to freshen up his act. <laughs> you think that'd be worth $600? $600? Comedy stuff like that could be worth $1,000. $2,000, as a matter of fact. You think they'd be willing to go as high as $2,000, Donald? Honey, Danny Thomas and Milton Burrow can certainly afford $2,000. Do I hear three? <laughs> so you both knew Harry Marie. Danny and I were in vaudeville with Harry. Uh, he was one of the greatest guys in the world. Were you close? Close? Once I got a sunburn, that was the only thing that ever came between Harry and me. <laughs> there, I just said Harry and me instead of me and Harry. That proves that I liked him. Yeah, Harry fed us in those early days. Not only food, but jokes, material, songs, dances, parodies. So when we read this thing about his starving niece, we thought we'd give her a little money to help her out, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you cooked up the scheme to buy the trunk. I was just thinking. Harry really never made it. But with a little boost, I think that Anne can. Well, she obviously won't take the money. Well, how are we going to help her out? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. What? What? Got an idea. What? Shh, shh, shh. Got an idea. What? Beautiful. Beautiful! What? You're right. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, come in. Thank you. Come in. I, uh, gee, I was hoping you'd come back. I'm, uh, I'm ready to discuss things. Good. Yes, um, I was, uh, thinking about the offer you gave me on my trunk yesterday. I was thinking about it, too. Oh, good. I'm sorry that I offered you the $600. Oh, well, after all, it was reasonable. Oh, something like that is much more valuable than $600. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. <laughs> uh, you were bright enough to recognize that. Well, I do have these occasional moments of brightness. A thousand dollars wouldn't even be enough. Talk about bright. You certainly are outshining me. I'd be ashamed to offer you two thousand for it. 
It's nothing to be ashamed of. So I won't. <laughs> well, look, it's your money. Anne, I'm not offering you a million dollars. You're not? Oh. Is it uh, closer to a million and a dime or a million less a dime? I wouldn't humiliate either one of us by offering you any money whatsoever. You, uh, you want to trade my trunk for a yacht. No, your agent made it quite clear that you would be insulted by any offer of money. My agent did all that? Yes, he did. Wonderful boy. He'll be a great loss. So forget the money offer and forgive me. Oh, I forgive. I just don't know if I can forget. Well, since you won't take any money... Since you won't give it. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll take my help in another way. Your help in, in another way? What, what, what help? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Mr. Brill, how can I ever thank you? Every big star in the world is out there. Honey, as long as I'm here, every big star in the world is not out there. <laughs> That's what I meant, everyone but you. As a matter of fact, every big star is here. You and I. How do you like that? I already gave you better billing. How do you like what I just said? You and I, huh? Yeah, you forgot my butterflies. Don't tell me you're nervous. Who else can I tell? Uh, come on, honey. You're going to be great. You're going to be sensational. Yeah, but everybody's out there. Jack Benny, George Burns, George Jessel. All friends of your Uncle Harry and future friends of yours. Oh, Mr. Burl, mm -hmm. how can I ever thank you? By not being funny. <laughs> Welcome to the Friars. And now here he is, your host of this evening, one of America's great comedians, your friend and his, <laughs> me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for that very marvelous welcome. Actually, it wasn't that marvelous, but how many people know how to greet a legend? <laughs> I see we have a lot of names in the audience tonight. Feud them clean. There's George Burns sitting over there, not looking a day over 20. And there's Georgie Jessel sitting over there, not looking for anyone a day over 20. <laughs> uh, Jack, Jack Benny. Jack Benny, good to see you, Jack. Sitting over there with his back to the check. <laughs> he has an impediment in his reach. <laughs> what, what you mean? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready. I'm very, very proud to introduce our lovely young guest for this evening. Harry Marie's very beautiful and talented niece. I want a warm Friars reception for Miss Anne Marie. Thank you very much, Mr. Bruce. Well, you're very, very welcome. I understand that you hope to have a very successful show business career someday. Yes. <laughs> I understand you do, too. I... <laughs> I'll have you know that I was a success in show business before you were born. Oh, then I just missed it. <laughs> Honey, you didn't miss anything. That's what I heard. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was a hit when you were born. I was one of the first stars on television. Am I right, gentlemen? Really? Uncle Milty. Does that mean anything to you? Uncle Milty? Of course it does. That was the, the first really important television show. Right. And you were the first real comedy star. Now you got it. Milty. Right. Milty Duty. <laughs> Mil Milty Duty? It's Milty Duty time. I it's Milty Duty <laughs> It was howdy duty time. You see, I was Milton. Remember? Milton? I, I swear I'll kill you. I'll kill you a million times. No, 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 no. Milton. Uh, Milton. Mil 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 round tones. Mil Mil round, round, Mil 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 Honey, honey, wait a minute. Hold it. I'm supposed to get the laughs. It hasn't happened for 40 years. Why should it happen tonight? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Danny Thomas carrying his case to court. <laughs> Milton, that joke is 60 years old. Well, that would make you 10 when it was born. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Marie? How do you do, Mr. Thomas? What are you doing with that trunk? Well, uh... The uh, trunk is his trademark. <laughs> I, I won't forget that. See, he even has a memory like an elephant. <laughs> trunk, isn't it? That's right, dear, and I thought we'd open it up and see some of the wonderful things that your Uncle Harry used to use. Oh, what, what a that? terrific idea. Oh, what do we have here? That's a shower curtain. A shower curtain? Uh, did you take a shower? Why, Why is there one? Miss oh, <laughs> oh what, what's this? This, my dear, is a sack, and it has in it all the jokes Milton Berle ever made up. 
It's empty. I rest my case. <laughs> Give me that. You two ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Look ashamed. <laughs> this sack happens to be part of my famous magic trunk trick. Your famous trunk? Yes, my magic famous trunk trick. I never heard of it. Hmm, that makes 200 million people. Sure, sure, Thomas. Go on. Laugh at me. Oh, I wish we could. <laughs> Young lady, would you do me a favor? Would you assist me with this trick? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen of the friars, watch this trick. Get into the sack. Yes. Climb right into it. Yes, That's sir. That's it. That's fine, fine. Put your foot in there. Yeah. Watch this great disappearance trick. I will go. take this, and I will close the sack right over this lovely young lady, Anne-Marie. Oh. I will put her in the sack. Oh, it's a sense. Down a little further, Anne. That's yeah. fine. Then, uh, close that there in. Fine. Go. Bring that, that in. Goes. Okay. Then I will close the trunk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that I've locked the trunk, I will now double lock it with this foolproof lock. Mr. Thomas, if you please. Thank you, Mr. Burrow. You're doing it? I'm doing it. I'll stand above the trunk, right on top of it. Are you ready? Ready. Give me the curtain. Watch this magnificent trick. Spectacular. Drum roll. <laughs> well, very good, Mr. Thomas. And now may I please have the key? What key? You don't have the key to the trunk? Oh, you sure you don't have it? Let me out. Let me out of here. Oh, where's the key? I got it in my pocket. Oh, thank heavens, I thought it was lost. Get me out of here. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to do? Well, we've, got, we've got to think of something. Are you thinking of something? Yes, are you? No way. Well, well we, 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 we've got to find a way of getting Mr. Burl out of the trunk. Why? Where is it written? Well, I mean, we just can't leave him in there forever. Why? Where is it written? I'm writing. I'm writing. <laughs> Where are you going? Nowhere, nowhere. I, I just feel uncomfortable sitting on him. You see, I never considered Newton one of my staunchest supporters. <laughs> I'm glad. I was afraid you were going to go and leave me out here all alone. Me leave you? Are you kidding? Wherever we go, whatever we do, Count me in two, it's together. Then let's put it there, the billing we'll share. I gotta have air. It's, it's together. together. Wherever I go, I know she goes. Wherever I go, I know he goes. No fits, no fights, no feuds, no ego. Wherever, 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 wherever we go. And Milton Burrow said I really have a flair for comedy. You do, honey. You were great. Oh, Donald, thank you. And everybody was so great. I just loved meeting all those stars afterward. Yeah, so did I. You know, there were a lot of producers in the audience, too. Yeah, well, let's just keep our fingers crossed. Maybe you'll hear from one. Didn't I tell you I already did hear from one? You're kidding. That's terrific. Who? David Merrick. But I turned him down. Man, David Merrick is the biggest. What did he offer you? Fifty dollars for Uncle Harry's trunk. Hold out, honey. Hold out. <laughs>